Good morning, LiveWeatherBlogs.com meteorologist Bob Akir for you with today's tropical update for Wednesday, September 1st, 2010. Our big story again today is Hurricane Earl. Hurricane Earl is now down to a Category 3 hurricane, still a major and very dangerous hurricane. Maximum sustained winds at 125. Uh, minimum central pressure uh, just um, recorded by the Air Force Reconnaissance aircraft is up to 943 millibars. So we've seen some slight weakening overnight, um, nothing really significant, and actually the core of the hurricane still looks pretty good this morning, which I'll show you in a minute. Uh, movement, northwest at 16. This is pretty um, prominent here. Um, really haven't seen much of a slowdown with Earl. Actually, he's starting to speed up already, and this could definitely track the system a little closer to the coast. Um, we've seen some of the models overnight come in a little farther west. Um, so. Um, a little bit of a, a concern for, of course, our hurricane watch area, which now includes a portion of, Virgi of the Virginia coast. Um, we're now to, um, from Surf City here in North Carolina all the way up to Paramore Island in Virginia. So it's been extended a little farther north. Um, a portion of this area should be under a hurricane warning by later today. And I suspect we'll see her tropical storm watches extended up along the coast here possibly hurricane watches. It's really hard to say right now. Um, if the models keep trending a little farther west, um, we may see even hurricane watches a little farther up the coast, but definitely probably tropical storm watches along the coast here from Delaware, Maryland, Jersey. And then later on, probably tomorrow, we could see some hurricane watches go out for you know, eastern Long Island and then here in southeastern New England, probably Rhode Island and uh, Massachusetts, definitely the Cape and all that because that area is a little bit of concern now for me. Um, as I thought yesterday, we thought this was going to go east of um, the Cape, but now it's going to get a little closer here. And um, for those of you living in this area here, especially in this area in the cone here, west of the track, um, I would start kind of preparing for a hurricane here in this area. Um, and then of course, again, our friends um, along the east coast of Maine, um, and then especially Nova Scotia, they look like they might bear the uh, direct landfall of this, um, this hurricane. Um, as far as um, intensity goes, still thinking today, I don't see a total weakening trend. I'll show you on the satellite view in a minute. There's still a lot of dry air surrounding this system. It's trying to undercut the circulation, but um, overall it looks pretty healthy. And we could see uh, definitely in the next 24 to 36 hours as this makes its way towards North Carolina. I don't see a big weakening trend. If anything, it's either going to stay steady. Could see a little strengthening today still. I don't think we're done with that. We might see it try to come back a little bit today, but then kind of steady and maybe very, very slow weakening. What that means is as this gets to closer to the uh, North Carolina Outer Banks, we still should see a Category 3 hurricane, if not a high-end Category 2 hurricane, but still a very significant system. And then as it passes east of... Uh, New Jersey here should still see a Category 2, and we could see a landfalling Category 2 hurricane um, near southeastern Massachusetts here, so a uh, pretty big concern for them right now. Okay, so let's go through here. Um, first, the satellite view this morning. You could see, look pretty ragged here, the eye. We had the southwesterly shear, and then dryer is actually trying to undercut the circulation here. But the last few frames, you see this outflow towards the west kind of get a little better. Some um, cloud tops starting to um, starting to cool here, um, which is good news. You see some brighter reds here. Well, not good news if you want to see this thing strengthen. We'd like to see this thing weaken, but um, you can see the eye coming becoming a little better defined. So we could see a little strengthening today. I'm still kind of thinking that could happen. So we'll see what happens with the dry air. But the shear is definitely going to lessen a little bit today. The bigger picture, okay, so where is this going? Uh, let's just look at the um, water vapor loop here. Here's this bridge of high pressure ridging in right here. You can see the water vapor loop here. So we can almost paint the picture that this, this is going to get to right about in this area here. So this track looks pretty good by the National Hurricane Center, but we could even nudge it a little farther west. Um, yesterday I was thinking this comes this comes about 100 miles east of uh, Hatteras. Um, Right now, I might want to nudge that to about 50 miles um, east of Hatteras. So, you know, it's going to get pretty close to Hatteras. And then again, 
is this going to make a quicker hook this way? Not looking likely anymore. Um, I'll show you something on the GFS model here in a minute. But we're going to be watching for this trough to try to kick this system eastward. It's kind of been laying back a little bit more than, than we thought initially. So this definitely could bring this system closer to the coast now. Um, here it is, the um, wind shear map. And you can see about 10 to 15 knots of southwesterly shear. That's down from yesterday. Yesterday we were about 15 to 20. So you can see shear is lessening, is getting a little weaker. And this system will probably encounter... You know, like I said, steady state up until we get to North Carolina. Then a little more southwesterly shear as that trough interacts with this system and cooler ocean water should slowly weaken the system. I don't think as slowly as I thought initially. That's why I'm thinking we could see a Category 2 hurricane if this does make landfall across southeastern uh, New England. Um, with that trough laying back a little bit more, um, we might not have as much shear up here as I initially thought. Okay, and here is the uh, layer wind mean analysis. This is showing you where this system is going to go. Here's that tongue of uh, high pressure still bridging in here. That could bring the system closer to North Carolina. And then again, we're going to watch for our trough here. How amplified is this? Will this give it a little budge off to the east or not? You know, so that's really what we're seeing here. And again, I think this is going to come a little closer to the coast than I thought yesterday. Early run models, you could see most of them still off the coast, but you could see this isn't as big of a bend now. We're kind of a little more north northeast, so a lot of them have gotten very close to the um, the Cape area here, and then of course um, Nova Scotia under the gun for a direct landfall with this system, and also eastern Maine, um, especially as we get up towards um, towards the tip of Maine here, extreme eastern Maine. You really have to watch this system as well. Um, not so much for um, southeast Maine here. You're going to be a little farther away from the center. But up here in extreme eastern Maine, you're really going to have to watch this system as well. Okay, models. Here's a bunch of them plotted up. We saw the no gaps model come farther west. Again, no gaps hasn't performed that well, especially the last two seasons. But we do have the GFS, which I'll show you in a minute, and a very reliable UK MET model. Um, coming pretty close to the coast as well. So that gives you some concern. The consensus is still a little off the coast, but again, looking at some of those, those things I was talking about, I see this coming a little closer to the coast right now. Okay, GFS, this was 0Z, 500 millibars. This is for um, Friday afternoon, and then we're going to compare it to 6Z. So what do we see here? Well, look at it again. This is 0, this is 6. This trough isn't as amplified as it was. That's not good news. So that's the little subtle differences here. And also the trough out west kind of laying back a little bit as well. Um, again, all of this has implications of, it's kind of like a moving train here. This trough pushes this area of high pressure, which in turn pushes this area of, of this trough. You know, everything's kind of moving west to east. So if something slows down, it kind of makes the rest of the train slow down. So. Um, you know, in, in simpler terms for people that don't really understand these maps too well. So that's why we watch things way out west here to see what's going to happen. Um, so if everything kind of slows down, well, then Earl's going to come closer to the, to the coast because it's not going to get pushed. So we've seen that kind of trending here with the GFS, and, um, which gives me a little bit of concern for, um, for southeastern uh, New England here, especially the uh, southeastern Massachusetts area. Surface on the surface here. Um, this is GFS. This is for um, early uh, Friday morning. You can see still pretty close to Cape Hatteras. Hasn't really changed its position too much from 0Z to 6Z, but still we could get that western eye wall um, pretty close to the Hatteras coast here, North Carolina coast. And then we'll advance it up to uh, Friday afternoon. Again, not, hasn't gotten much closer to Jersey, Delaware, Maryland. We could still definitely see tropical storm force winds here. And again, a lot of coastal effects, of course. Um, will we see hurricane force winds along the Jersey shore in Delaware, Maryland? Right now, you're still looking like you're going to be out of that area here. But then as we get to eastern Long Island, Rhode Island, uh, southeastern Massachusetts, these are areas that could possibly see some hurricane force winds with this system. And there we go. This is um, for late Friday night, early Saturday morning, passing very close to the Cape here. 
and then again it'll eventually it all goes planned make landfall in Nova Scotia um, sometime on Saturday uh, here's the UK Met model just running this real quick here and this will show you um, what I what, what we were seeing here is it's getting very close to the Catarus coast and then again wants to make landfall here across southeastern Massachusetts and here's our friend the Euro um, again it's been very consistent on showing this system um, riding right up along the coast pretty much sim similar to the GFS uh, hasn't really been much changes to it uh, the last couple days here all right so what else do we have that's Earl um, we have Fiona here it's actually gotten a little better organized although we still see this uh, northerly shear from uh, Earl's outflow it's kind of gained a little bit of distance from Earl as you can see here um, Earl's kind of sped up Fiona's kind of slowed down still though we have that outflow if it wasn't for Earl being so close this would have been a hurricane already as well um, it's gonna follow the weakness from Earl no doubt about that um, uh, later on it could kind of get caught up in this area right south of Bermuda and maybe hang around for a while um, we'll have to see what happens if it survives um, this one could get a little interesting as it might want to back back to the west um, in about four or five days so Fiona's not done yet um, we'll really have to watch her carefully and see what she does if she doesn't dissipate and holds her own Earl moves out of here quickly we could see a storm just kind of floating around here south of Bermuda um, as it waits for something to kick it out and what, what may happen high pressure might build to its north and it might want to kick west but again don't no alarming there yet we'll have to just watch and see that and look at this guy out here talk about good spin huh if it was for dry air this would be our next tropical depression and it probably will be our next tropical depression number nine uh, in the next 24 hours still has to fight a lot of that dry air um, Sal is very entrenched the Saharan air layer is entrenched over the eastern Atlantic right now so these systems as you saw with Earl then with Fiona and you're gonna see with this one once they get west here right in this area here they start developing quicker this could be our first Caribbean cruiser well not Caribbean cruiser that would be farther west, farther south but anyway this could be our first system that's gonna get into the Caribbean so definitely gonna wanna watch this one very carefully for uh, you know these Caribbean waters are untapped and uh, anything gets into here we could definitely see our first category 5 hurricane but Again, down the road, but this could be our first system that actually goes farther west. And that would be um, Gustav if it, um, if it, oh no, Gaston, right? Gaston if it, um, if it develops there. Um, models for Fiona, here's Fiona, and again, you can see it's up to 60 miles an hour, west-northwest at 15, and again, once it gets into this area, you might want to stall, maybe make a loop-de-loop, -loop, maybe try to come back west if it survives models on Fiona you could see a lot of them going out to sea but we now we're seeing some starting especially the BAM model runs starting to try to bring it back west so it's going to be interesting to watch Fiona down the road and then here's our invest 98L should become a tropical depression in about 24 to 48 hours and you see a lot of models trending farther west and I definitely believe this one's going farther west there's a no doubt about it pattern shifting high pressure at Azor Bermuda high strengthening up here this is going to move farther west and there's that Saharan air layer pretty entrenched in the eastern and here's and by the way here's another strong wave moving off the African coast as well so we're going to be watching both of these systems um, but you can see a lot of dry air in the eastern and eastern Atlantic but once it moves west it's in prime area and look at all that dry air around Earl huh could be interesting especially as this moves off the coast um, areas to the west of Earl, especially as you go inland, might not see anything. It's going to be a pretty quick dividing line between um, rain and no rain as this moves up the coast with a lot of that dry air um, west of uh, Earl. So that's it for today. I will have another tropical update for you guys. Uh, possibly later tonight I will try to get one in or possibly um, probably do a quick one this afternoon, later this afternoon after the uh, 12Z model runs come in. Have a good day.